ನಿನ್ನ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಡೇಂಜರ್ ಆಗಿದ್ರಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ ಬೇಕು ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಐ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಯು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೈರ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿ ರೆಜಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಆರ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎಲ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಎಲ್ ಟು ಇಂಟು ಎ ಟು ಬೈ ಎ ಒನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವ್ ಐ ಡನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಬೈ ರಿಪ್ಲೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಟು ಬೈ ಎ ಒನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ನು ಲೆಟರ್ ಆನ್ ಇವನ್ ಐ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಲ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಎಲ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಡನ್ ಇಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಚಿಂಗ್ if you double the length then resistance will increase four times like it is only for stretching only for stretching okay so in the same way if you replace the l with the area yesterday i told you r1 by r2 will be equal to a2 by a1 square i was okay what what that is inversely this please make a note here so this is inversely right resistance is inversely proportional to square of the area right right or not if it is not stretched then earlier formula you know for not stretching purpose that general formula is what r is equals to rho l by in this case only one power this is just simply for a given for a given length of y using this formula here only area of that comes here when stretching comes then you have to use this form got my point okay now <clears throat> here few ch- few cases let me go for with this formula r is equal to what is r here resistance of the given wire so rho l by a so this is i am talking about one given one length of wire okay i am talking about one wire i am talking about one wire right so area of that wire is a and length of that wire is l right or not and the that wire is l say the mass of this wire is m volume of this wire is v right or not okay now this this formula resistance can be written in terms of mass and volume also so resistance can be written even rho can i multiply numerator and denominator by area of that wire so if i multiply with numerator also denominator also area right in denominator it will become a square so it will be what r is equals to what rho length into area is volume divided by area square so this is in terms of volume okay or not in terms of volume is it right it is in terms of volume got my point okay <coughs> it is okay now okay now so this is in terms of volume done okay now okay so in terms of mass how do you convert that r is equals to rho v by a square then okay here what should be 
this uh, what is the density here density let me write right here density of this body this material will be rho so the density of material okay here rho, the, let this be i'll represent other way also so because it will be consuming with this is resistivity let me write the density as d right okay now density of material density of material i can write it as density of material will be mass by volume right or not using this density formula i can replace here so resistance resistance is equals to rho what is here this can be what is volume can be written as mass by density mass by density what is d here density so density of my in terms of you know uh, density also i can what what is volume here volume can be replaced as what mass by density into like area square into density right or not so this is in terms of volume so if i replace volume like that mass by density it is in terms of mass and density got my point in place of volume what i written here this is density is mass by volume volume will be about mass by density in place of volume so i am written mass by density so resistance in terms of mass and density right or not like that also you can go for okay there are different formula of resistance of a wire Okay, now, <clears throat> okay, let me move on now for the next concept. Let us know, suppose, if you have like one uh, 10 resistors, the, the manufacturer will go for, for example, you have some resistors like uh, each resistance value is 1 ohm. You have 10 resistors of same value, like 1 ohm. One. Somewhere in any circuit, you need something like effective, like, you know, 1.1 .1 or something like effective, like 1.9, right or not? Sometimes circuit demands, sometimes circuit demands the effective is 0 0.6. Like these value manufacturer will not manufacture. Manufacturer will make the resistors of some standard values, like 1 ohm like 2 ohm, 3 ohm, something like that, one standard. Manufacturer will not manufacture like 0.99 ohm, like 1.2 ohm, like what it circuit, how much it demands for the controlling of current, what circuit demands for its for smooth functioning, some particular resistance we need in a electric circuit. So that resistance we can make up by going for a different combination of resistors, like these values, what we want, like, like different minute values of uh, small values of resistance like in between value of resistance manufacturer will not manufacture like that values they may not manufacture like that one ohm they may manufacture so how do you get these depending on the requirement of circuit that we can go for combination of resistance there are uh, three ways we can connect like series combination and parallel combination and even mixed combination also we can series and parallel mixing up can also we can go in order to have effective resistance what we require in the electrical circuit right or not so let's see an idea you know uh, first series combination and then we'll go for parallel combination okay now okay <coughs> let us go now series combination series combination of resistances series combination of resistances okay or not? series combination of resistances right okay now if you connect the resistors like you know end to end like that if you connect resistors like that their values R1 indicates the resistance of first one, R2 will be resistance of second, R3 is resistance of third. This is series combination. So if I connect them to a source battery, right? If I connect them to a source, its EMF is let us say V volt, V volt. Okay, the the it can provide how much volt? V volt. Right? Okay. Now, 
See, in series combination, as you know already, the current in each register remains same, right? So current, this current decided by that EMF find effective resistance. One particular current will go through like single, like I mean constant current will go through in all the resistors, right? But to make sure that constant resistance is going through all the resistance, the voltage will drop. Wherever high resistance is there, so high voltage will drop. So as to make sure that the current remains same, like wherever hindrance is more, wherever opposition is more, to make the constant flow of, I mean con constant current, voltage difference should be more. So driving force should be more. So wherever high resistance, high voltage out of this should drop there. So make sure that uh, the same constant rate of flow of charge should, I mean current should be same. I mean the voltage will divide. Voltage will divide. How voltage will divide? So as to make the current same across all the resistors. You know already, so here V, this formula, you know it. As this factor is constant throughout, it's a fact, you know, in practical circuits, we have observed it, current here remains same. Okay, so if this is same, V is proportional to R, right or not? Wherever higher resistance is there, higher voltage drop happens, lower resistance is there, lower voltage drop happens, then so as to make the current same, okay? Now, so this will be there in series combination. The first point, what is same here? Current, current remains same in each branch. Then second one, voltage drop is directly proportional to resistance. Right or not? Okay, now, so here one thing is very clear. The energy supplied per unit charge by the battery, okay, should always be equal to conservation of energy. Energy supplied per unit charge, that is voltage. That is, I mean, you know, total, total, if I say, that is EMF, let me say, total voltage, I mean, total energy supplied by the battery on per unit charge, okay, going through this one round trip journey, should be equal to energy, you know, supplied on charge to take to, I mean, voltage drop here, voltage drop here, voltage drop here. What is meaning here? Total V should be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 because applied energy should be equal to energy on each register. Just simply what is voltage energy per unit charge? Like, like simply you can say energy supplied to each charge. Got my point? So this is the total energy supplied on each charge, right or not? So one thing is conservation of energy says the total voltage applied should be equal to some of the voltage drop across each resistors because applied energy, like, you know, to consumed energy never be greater than applied energy, right or not? Applied energy should be equal to the energy used across all the resistors. That is there. Okay, what is the meaning here? So, applied voltage should be equal to voltage drop across each resistor. That's all. Right or not? Okay. So this can be, what is V1? V1, you can, uh, what is V1 here? Like uh, here, what is V1? V1 will be equal to what? I into R1. No. Therefore, I'll write here V1 as what? I into R1, I into R2 plus I into R2, R3. So if you take I common and bring it here, it will be V by I. It will be R1 plus, it will be R2 and this is R3. Then what is V? Total supplied voltage and net current gives you net resistance. So this can be written as total applied voltage, total net current developed there that gives the net resistance of the circuit. So that is equals to here net resistance. Let us say I'll subscript RS I'll use. That will be what R1 plus R2 plus R3. This will be what the net resistance. Okay, net resistance. So in this series combination, right? Okay, in series combination, okay. See, what is what is the potential difference across? What is the potential difference across? This V1, how do you write V1? 
Sí. V1. So can I write V1 as V1 as I into R1 you can write. What is I can be written? What is I can be written? Total current it is. Total current can be written as total voltage applied by effective resistance. Right or not? Right or not? Total voltage applied divided by effective resistance. What is effective resistance here? This is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Got my point? So in place of I, can I write this? That what is that? So in place of I, V divided by, okay or not? Okay, voltage across first register is, what is I can be written? Total, total voltage of the circuit, I mean supplied voltage of the circuit divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 into R1. Got my point? Well, that is also you can write voltage drop across first register can also be written like it. Got my point? It's a voltage across first. Likewise, you can go for even voltage across all. Got my point? Okay. Now, so here I, what I did here? I, I can be replaced what here? So what is V equal to? Total current into, so total effective resistance like that. Okay. Okay. Now, let here in this series case, the effective resistance will be greater than greatest among the three. What is here in this case? Effective resistance will be, effective resistance RS will be bigger than, what you can write? Bigger than, biggest, biggest resistance. Right or not? It will be bigger than like it is 1 ohm, if it is 2 ohm, if it is 3 ohm, then RS will be greater than 3 ohm. Right or not? Be greater than 3 ohm. Okay. Now, okay. Now, let me move on now here for the other cases now. Okay. Now, suppose, okay, that is there. Now for two resistors case, two resistors case, this is R1 and this is R2, okay or not? If supplied voltage, let this be V1, let this be V2, simply the, the one net current will develop, that will remain same, that will remain same. So now you can even write this V1, as I told you here, V1 is equals to I into R1. So V1 equal to, what is I can be written? Total supplied voltage by effective resistance R1 plus R2. Do you know this? Simple. Like V equal to total current into total resistance. What is total resistance here in series combination? R1 plus R2. So this is I is what? Applied voltage. I is applied voltage divided by total resistance into R1. So this is potential drop across first resistor. So for resistance, for voltage across this resistance, there will be effective resistance and then total voltage. In the same way, how do you write V2? How do you write V2? V2 equal to what? V2 equal to. So again, same current is going through even that R2 also. Same current is going through even R2 also. Right or not? So I can be written what? In the same way. Same way, I can be written what? Total voltage divided by total resistance, R1 plus R2. So I'll write here, therefore potential drop across the second is equals to I is what? V divided by R1 plus R2, okay, into R2. So this is the potential drop across. Okay, in case of series, current remains same, voltage drop, depending on voltage drop is directly proportional to resistance, right? So definitely voltage drop is the ratio of voltage drop will be how we can write the ratio of voltage drop v1 comma like you know of v2 comma like is to v3 is to dash 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 how will you write it right it is directly proportional to current no in place of v1 can i write r1 
is to R2 is to R3 dash dash. It means V is directly like ratio of voltage drop is equal to ratio of resistances like that. More the resistances, voltage drop across that resistance will be more, right? Okay. Now, these are all different formulas which are connected with series combination of resistances. In what is the uh, output of this series combination? If you want to have bigger resistances than what you have, then you should go for series combo. For example, you have 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, but you want effective resistance of more than 6 ohm. Okay, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm you have, right? Or you want effective resistance of like more than 3 ohm, more than 3 ohm. Then what you have to do? You should go for series common. To get the effective resistance more than uh, what individual resistance you have, then at that time you have to go for series combination. Right or not? Okay. Now, let me move on next. Okay. Now, let us go for parallel combination of resistances. Okay. Now, parallel combination combination of resistances. Parallel combination of resistances. Right or not? Okay. Right? Now, so here the resistances are connected between two common points. Here, one point here A and another point here B. Between two common points, we have connected all the resistances. Right? Between two common points, A and B, the resistance of this, let us say, R1, the resistance of this is R2, and the resistance of this is R3. So this is what parallel combination. Now, this, if I connect it to source, okay, supply, and uh, voltage supply, V volt it is supplying, right? Now, since these resistors are connected between two common points, definitely this A and B are common to R1, A and B are common to R2, A and B are common to R3, then whatever voltage drop between A and B, let us say that voltage drop between A and B will be V. Voltage drop between A and B is V volt. I mean, whatever supply voltage is there, that will drop between A and B. And that voltage is common to R1, common to R2, and common to R3. So voltage supplied in this particular case it will fully drop across AB. And that AB voltage will be common to R1, R2, R3. What is the indirect I mean is potential difference across each resistance remains same in parallel combination. Let me write the first point. Potential difference potential difference difference across each resistance is same got my point okay now any voltage across this is same this is same this is same look at ohm's law what is ohm's law is saying v is equals to i into r as this factor is same across all, then can you can we predict what will happen? So is it I is inversely proportional to R? What is the meaning here? Then ultimately, the resistance which is higher in one branch, right? Current flowing through that will be less because I is inversely proportional to R. So if resistance in any branch is more current passing through that branch will be less right vice versa like current whatever that depending on the effective resistance here so depending on the total supply voltage some current will create there let that current be what here let us say high current one one current one one this current depends on like applied potential difference and then hindrance i mean total opposition 
right or not got my point like uh, you are running you are running your speed depends on your internal energy like how fit you are like you are running your speed depends on your internal energy and it depends even on the road if the road is rough right or not it will oppose you more if the road is smooth it doesn't oppose much got my point so your speed depends not only on your internal energy then even it depends on the how that road is likewise so the current depends on is so energy supplier and even depends on the circuit total hinder total opposition of the circuit both will decide one single current and that current will be what i can say i got my point okay that current goes here current goes here then current finds you know three paths here the current always so always current prefer to go easiest path got my point current always prefer to go easiest but all the three paths no paths are you know infinite resistance all the three paths are uh, paths having finite resistance the current will divide how the current will divide in all the three so wherever high resistance small current is there let us say current through this will be i1 current through this is i2 and current through this is i3 so this current will go here and that current again conservation of charge concept how much current is entering at the point a in any second how much charge is entering at any point at any one second at a so definitely same charges should depart from b at the same time its conservation of charge later we will learn it charge neither be created nor be destroyed so how many like two electrons are entering in one second two electrons should depart depart here like of course if you take conventional direction if two positive charges are entering at a in one second two positive charges should depart at b in one second i mean am i right so there will be conservation of charge okay now like uh, what i mean here is i1 plus i2 plus i3 should come here and again they sum up again give back i and then i current will again get back here got my point okay now after this let us know what is let me write down here the i current has been splitted into i1 plus i2 plus i3 if you write that i equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 so what is here uh, i1 i1 can be written what use this formula like here what i can write i is equals to what v by r let me use this form this form here in place of i1 can i write v by r1 anyhow voltage across all the three remains same so plus v by r2 plus v by r3 so this is okay now so here anyhow we coming out common here v is common here okay or not v is common here take v here it will be i by v is equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so what is total current by total voltage that will be a net resistance it this is heading towards net resistance then what is a the form like i by i by v will be 1 by r no i by v will be 1 by r so that r will be what effect because total current are here and total voltage that that gives you total effective opposition no earlier i told you total current and total voltage if at all anything wherever you are writing that is heading towards effective resistance so 1 by rp is equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by so this is for three resistors like that you can write for n number of resistors like that combination goes on plus 1 by r4 1 by plus 1 by r5 like that it goes on right or not okay now if suppose you have equal resistors for equal resistances for equal resistances of n number n number i mean n n such resistors are connected in parallel that will be what effective equal to it is a 1 by r 1 by r one equal resistance no 1 by r 1 by r 1 by r 1 by r it's n times 1 by r no n times so what is rp will be what here it will be r by n no right or not 
if you have two registers two equal registers in parallel take two here in place of n if you have three equal registers in parallel you take in place of n three so it will be a, for equal resistance only for equal resistance only so this is what parallel combination got my point okay using that lcm and all you can even make out uh, the equivalent resistance also got my point okay now let me move on now okay now for simplicity let me take here for two two resistances two resistances in parallel let me take this first if you, if two resistances are in parallel suppose this is one resistance this is another let this be r1 this is r2 so these are in parallel they are connected between two common points one common point here and another common point here so these resistors are connected here between two common points side by side right or not such a combination we call it is a parallel combination so if i connect this to if i connect this to one battery right or not of supply of voltage v it will create some current depending on the total resistance right or not so there will be a current here in this branch is say i1 current in this branch let us say it is i2 so let me what is i1 here branch current what is i1 here i1 is what branch current branch current here branch is a to here a to b this is on branch right or not a to b from one junction to another it is also a branch like b a to b in this way also another branch what is the current in the upper branch i1 this is let me go for branch current formula branch current formula simply so what i can write here voltage drop will be same across r1 and r2 can i write v equal to i1 r1 should be equal to b anyhow the potential drop across both should be same no right or not okay this is done potential difference across both is same now i'll use only this now v equal to i1 into r r1 okay or not v equal to i1 into r1 what can be v written as how do you what is v written as v can i write this v as i total current into tell me now what is v can be written total total this is total voltage simply what is v here total voltage supplied by the supplied by the battery that is for drop across ab v is a total whatever voltage is here that battery voltage that will drop between a and b do you agree my point because in between nobody is consuming that here in between no resistors are there so applied voltage directly drop across ab so v is total applied voltage that can be written i into total resistance what is the total resistance in this case tell me now what is the effect resistance here r1 and r2 are parallel no r1 and r2 are parallel no in parallel combination you know already 1 by rp is equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 how could you make up this in another simplest form it will be cross multiply like that you can write no it will be r1 r2 no so what is rp will be what r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 is it parallel combination for two right right on here what is v i into effective resistance when you are writing v and i there must be effective resistance v equal to i you are writing means its coefficient should be effective resistance what is effective resistance here what is effective resistance effective resistance in this case is what so it will be i effective resistance is what r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 is equal to i1 into r1 what will get cancels here this r1 and this r1 gets cancels then i1 is what i1 equal to what is here main current resistance of the 
other branch here i1 is a current in the upper branch but in numerator any of this main current will come on it will come only numerator having resistance of other branch your current you are getting in the other branch but in numerator you have resistance of another branch so r2 what is remaining in the denominator r1 plus r2 this is branch current formula this is branch current formula other way you can compare this with you can compare this with this you will get current in the other branch also can we do it okay or not current in the other branch also no so you can even compare that to get the current in the other what is v equal to what i2 into r2 what is v total current total effect resistance r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 is equals to what i2 into r2 this this i2 this i this r2 r2 gets cancels no then i2 is equals to what the main current main current and then this is r1 divided by r1 plus r2 this is the another branch current formula got my point so this will help you in some case okay now in parallel combination in parallel combination so current will divide inversely proportional to how the current divides i is inversely proportional to r because voltage v equal to ir in parallel this is constant this is what will be this is constant no therefore i is inversely proportional to okay current uh, across each branches can be written i1 is to i2 is to i3 is to dash 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 is equals to 1 by r1 is to 1 by r2 is to 1 by r3 the ratio goes on right or not like that okay so current will divide like that got my point okay in in conclusion what in parallel combination clearly if you take one example if for example if you have uh, r1 is 1 2 ohm and r2 is you can take 3 ohm okay or not if you connect them in parallel like end by end type so what will be effective resistance here in this case r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 it will be 2 into 3 by 2 plus 3 what will be answer here 6 by 5 right or not point okay it will be what here it will be here 1.2 right or not 1.2 is it right okay now look at this value this value is lesser than the least this is 2 ohm is a less this is lesser than the least conclusion is what in parallel combination the effective resistance will be lesser than the least remember always if you want to make uh, uh, for example you have 2 ohm and 3 ohm resistors but your circuit demands something less than 2 ohm right or not your circuit demands more than 3 ohm then you will go for series combination if your circuit demands less than 2 ohm you will go for parallel combination simple like if you want somewhere less than what you have the least least among your resistances less than that least you want then which combination you prefer to go parallel combination so the effective resistance in parallel effective effective resistance in parallel in parallel is lesser than the least resistances resistance lesser than the least rest got my point this is what we have what is same in this case potential difference across each resistance will be same right or not this is what parallel combination so mixed combination is also there 
So by using these only, we work out even in the mixed combination and much uh, extension of that you don't have. So later once you come so higher classes, we'll get to know more about it. So now I'll move on from here. Got my point? Okay. Now before I move on to your heating effect, before I move on to your heating effect, let me take one example here. Suppose you have a ring, ring of resistance. Suppose you have a ring, ring of resistance say R. You have a ring like that. Right? What is the resistance of this ring? Say R. My question is, say that, let me say the radius of this will be, let me say the radius of this will be, right? I have like that one ring, right? It's like this. Okay. Okay, suppose I have a ring, you know, let me take the ring. Okay, let it be. Okay, the radius of this ring will be what? Doesn't look like ring, no? I don't want it. Okay. Let me, let me, okay. Suppose you have a ring. What is the resistance of that ring will be? R. Let us say the radius of that ring. Radius of that ring, let this be smaller. And we have two points on the ring. Let the point P here and point Q here. My supply, voltage supply, I'll connect to P and Q. Voltage supply, I'll connect it to P and say like that. What will be effective resistance? Suppose the P and Q subtending an angle, say theta. Our answer should be in terms of theta R. Here voltage supply is weak. Let it. What is, what is question here? What is question? This is a ring. What is the total resistance of the ring? R. Here P and Q are the two points on the ring where I am connecting the battery. Question is, what is the effective resistance of this ring if I connect my battery between P and Q? Got my point? Find, find effective, effective resistance between P and Q. What is the effective resistance between P and Q? Right? Okay. Now, see here. So, resistance of this, let me say this is 1 and this part, let us say this is 2. What is the length of this PQ can be written? Length of 1, let me say. Length of 1 can be written what? It is like arc type, no? What is your basic formula? Angle subtended is equal to arc divided by radius, no? Hope you already know about this. Arc by radius. Right or not? Here arc is some length. Radius is R. So arc is equal to theta into radius, no? Theta into, okay, this is L1. Got my point? Then how do you write resistance? Total, let me first write total resistance R is, you know, uh, over what length? 2 pi R. Total resistance here. Okay. Can I write R1? Let the resistance of this one part will be R1. Resistance of this second part will be R2. Resistance of this wire PQ can be written as... Listen carefully. 
resistance of only this much wire can be written resistance per unit length what is total resistance r total length of ring is 2 pi r what do you mean by this resistance per unit length what do you mean by capital r by 2 pi r resistance per unit length into the length whose resistance you want what is the length i want resistance from here into the length whose resistance you want got my point what is r1 what is r by 2 pi r it's a linear uh, like uh, resistance per unit length we say it is resistance total resistance by total length if you do resistance per unit length got my point is it okay or not resistance per unit length into the length whose resistance you want theta into r is the length whose resistance is r1 got this okay no okay now let me move on what should be in the same way what is r2 r2 is resistance of this part that will be resistance per unit length into its length what its length let, let us say this is what this this is what can i write this is uh, this theta is already done total angle subtended at the center of the circle is 2 pi theta is already done the remaining angle will be 2 pi minus theta remaining angle will be what 2 pi minus theta so it's okay let me first write l2 before that let me write first l2 okay or not this is there this is 2 pi r okay or not this is 2 pi r okay now what is l2 what is l2 here to here this is called l2 let me write that l2 here l2 is equals to like arc length l2 is equal to angle what is angle 2 pi minus theta angle into radius this is the length of here to here length got my point then therefore what is r2 r2 resistance of this part is equal to resistance per unit length resistance per unit length into the length whose resistance i want what is the length whose resistance i want 2 pi minus theta into r we have got r2 also then now think of this one and this two are connected between two common points between these two common points this is also connected and this is also connected then definitely the this wire and this wire in parallel they are connected between two common points this is radius don't bother about this thick line actually i could have taken dotted line so here to here this is center here here to here it's a radius so actually here to here wire and here to air they are connected in parallel got my point okay let me move on okay okay done then definitely if these two are in parallel what is the effect resistance then effect resistance in parallel is r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 then we we'll substitute it now what is r1 here r divided by 2 pi r into theta into r right or this is r1 what is r2 r divided by 2 pi r into 2 pi minus theta into 2 pi minus theta got my point sorry theta into r also theta into r okay or not can you okay can you observe this r1 into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 r divided by 2 pi r into theta into r plus r1 plus r2 got my point what is r2 here r divided by 2 pi r into what is here 2 pi minus theta into r hope you can got my point all of you right or not so what i did here r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 done okay okay is it visible okay or not is it visible what i did here r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 done okay now let me write here what is what what will be uh, common here what is common here 
in denominator r and r will come out common and gets 1 r cancelled got my point here 2 pi r 2 pi r 1 2 pi r gets cancelled here right or not anyhow here also r also gets cancelled here this r will cancels with this r this r cancels with this r here 2 pi 2 pi it will be 1 2 pi will come on here and gets cancels here okay this r also gets cancels here right this r this r gets cancels here what is remaining here this is equals to r into r what r square here 2 pi into 2 pi it will be 4 pi r 4 pi square then what is remaining here theta into 2 pi minus theta divided by divided by right divided by what is here what is common i can take r i can take common no what i can take common r and then denominator what i can take common 2 pi what is remaining here theta plus any r comes out to r by 2 pi comes out common r r gets cancels here 2 pi minus theta then what here 1 r 1 r gets cancels 2 ones are 2 2 za and then pi pi 1 pi gets cancelled. What is remaining? What is remaining? So, this is equal to right or not? Okay. Now, this is equal to so what is here remaining r theta here what? 2 pi minus theta divided by here what is remaining? Everything gets cancelled here. 2 pi is remaining. No? 2 pi is remaining whole divided by this theta theta gets cancelled. What is remaining? 2 pi. Then what should be answer then? What should be answer then? Okay or not? What is the answer? Tell me what is the answer? 2 pi 2 pi. What, okay. This will be what? R theta 2 pi minus theta divided by 2 pi 2 pi what? 4 pi square. So get that method what I did is you get to know. What I did just get that, that you get to know. Okay or not? So this will be an effective resistance. This will be an effective resistance. Got my point? Okay, now. Then lastly, let me tell you, in the last class, that while telling this R1 by R2 is equals to, I did it, A2 square by A1 square in the last class while ending. I written R is proportional to A square. That is problem. That is wrong. Just... Uh, like that I written. So what is actually here? Inversely. R is inversely proportional to A square. Please make a note this is okay. Even in the first I told you. Okay, this is not done. Please make here in stretched case. In which case? In stretched case, resistance is inversely proportional to area of the wire square. Please make a note like that it should be resistance. Got my point? So it will be this is regarding in the stretching case. Okay or not? Okay, done. Now let me move on for after this. Uh, uh, let me have one more problem. Let me have one more problem. Okay or not? In the same way. See here. Suppose we have one uh, battery of 50 volt, you can say, and the current that it is sending, let me say, 1, 2 ampere. Okay or not? We have one resistance here, say R1, and we have another resistance here, say one uh, 10 ohm. 10 ohm. Got my point? My question is, <clears throat> this I will split here. It will be I1 here. It will be I2 here. My question is, what should be effect? What should be resistance R1? Let us say one given thing in this case will be effective resistance. Okay, they are, this is what circuit they have given. What they are asking is, find R1. They are asking what? Find R1. This value not given, we have to find that. Right or not? This is a circuit given. So, here this is the total voltage supplied will be 50 volt. And it is sending the main current how much? It will be 2 ampere. So, R1 is not given then this 10 ohm is given, then what we are asked to find is R1. Okay, now, tell me now this R1 and 10 ohm are parallel or in series. They will be in parallel because between two, these two common points, R1 and 10 ohm are connected. They are in parallel, no? Definitely they are in parallel. What should be effective resistance then? 
So let me go for effective resistance will be here what R1 into 10 divided by R1 plus 10. Got my point? So then to find that R1, how do you find RP? So I told you earlier, so effective resistance you will get from net voltage and then net current. Net current they have already given. So definitely net voltage is equal to net current into total effective resistance. This you can use it. Right or not? Then they are given net voltage, the total voltage supplied. Okay. And they are given even net current also. How much is creating there? Then definitely what is effective resistance using this formula? Effective resistance R is equals to, it will be what? V by I. V by I. Right or not? What is total voltage here? It will be 50 here. And then what is total current developing there? 2 here. Then what is the effective resistance in this case? What is the effective resistance in this case? So effective resistance in this case will be 25 ohm. Got my point? Likewise, you have to find effective resistance. Then substitute here. So here, here I am using this. Let me use now this. Right or not? I'll go now here. Right or not? Okay. Now RP value will be out here. RP value. Therefore, RP. What is RP here? It will be 25 is equals to R1 into 10 divided by R1 plus 10. Right or not? So therefore, you just cross multiply 25 into R1 plus 25 into 10 is what? 250 is equals to 10 into R1. Then you bring this 10 R1 this side, 10 R1 this side, then it will be what here, 10 R1 if you bring this side, it will be 250 no, hopefully, okay. So 10 if you bring here, it will be what, 10 like 15 R1 is equal, it is 15 R1, if you bring here, it will be 15 R1 plus 250 is equals to 0, got my point, then definitely some values I should have taken differently so that you can get likewise you can find R value, R1 value by using it. But in this case it is getting negative but I taken arbitrary value of resistances and arbitrary value of potential difference. So here remember resistance never be negative it is always what positive. So it means I taken those values just arbitrarily possibility that we are getting here negative. Proper value, if you take, this is a method, what I did here, main current will be, how you will find main current? Main current will be out here. Main current is, in this case, is 2 ampere, supply voltage is 50. Using these to find out the net effective resistance, applied voltage, net current, effective resistance. Effective resistance, V, you know it, it is 50. I will be 2 here. So, what is effective resistance will be at 25 ohm. Then this formula, since both are in parallel, it will be R1, 10, R1 plus 10. So it will be R. Okay, we have found out here value of that RP is 25. Then you substitute here, here R1 into 10, R1 plus 10 and cross multiply 25 R1. Then uh, it will be 25 into 10, it will be 250 and here R1 into 10. So 10 R1, if you take here, it will be 15 R1, it is 250 is equals to 0. But if you do it here, you are getting negative. That's wrong here. If such a case comes, that's not properly. Uh, all values are not properly placed. Resistance always should be positive. Here, arbitral value is taken. That here, it means whatever set of values I had taken, that's not matching in the circuit. Because resistance I'm getting negative, it should be always positive. Got my point? So likewise, different problems we will solve in the next class. Okay, we will start along with these problems of series and parallel. We will start uh, heating effect of the current and then power of the circuit. Done. Right. In the next class, I will continue where I left here now, where I leave from here. Thank you. Okay.